One of the primary reasons to cash out the $799.99 is not only to get the nostalgic Super Nintendo Classic, but to get a new game that hasn't been released for over 20 years. Yes, I'm talking about Star Fox 2. All you retro people who've been waiting all this long, it's finally out. It's not the beta, it's not the alpha, it's not the prototype. This is the newly released Star Fox 2. Now the ROM backup has been officially released. Check out the comment section below to get your ROM. It does work for RetroPie, the Raspberry Pi, the PC, the Android, probably iOS, I haven't tested it on that yet, but all those things work great. I'm gonna show you the difference between Raspberry Pi and the PC and try a few different emulators. But this is it in all of its glory. So here's the ROM here, it's approximately one megabyte very easy and you can play on your PC with SNES 9x I actually had really good results using it with that if you have a Raspberry Pi just go ahead and connect to the Wi-Fi or LAN and network in it and on your PC you could just drag and drop this go to the RetroPie Pi menu there and go into ROMs as far as how to transfer files all you're gonna do is go into your ROMs directory and then you should have an SNES folder and all you have to do is drag over the .sfc file. Even if you have .rars in your current setup for SNES, you can still mix in the .sfc files, no problem. Once you drag it in there, you should, you should just have to restart your Pi, and it should automatically detect. You can go ahead and scrape your artwork if you want. There should be some scraped artwork available for the beta and alpha, which is a similar box art. Or you can add your own as well, transferring it over on the same SNES folder within your uh, Raspberry Pi. So we're going to go ahead and launch SNES 9X version 1.53. All right, welcome to Star Fox 2. I'm running on a really high-end PC. But as you can see, these cutscenes are a little laggy on the Pi. Not laggy at all on the PC. Any mid-range PC will do just fine. We need to pick our characters really quick. As you can see, I'm getting consistent 60 frames per second. Something that's quite a bit different about this game than the alpha and the betas is um, this game has the last level, the impossible level. It finally has the walker gameplay, totally the controls are finally easy to use. There's some advanced shadowing done in this game that you'll notice in some of the advanced levels, including uh, underworlds. There's one level where you can actually go under and you're not in space, you actually go to an underworld. Um, one of the biggest deals is this right here, is as I go to this thing, you'll notice that this missile here and this missile here is coming closer to me and to the planet. Because it's a real-time game, the, the clock never stops unless you press timeout. Anytime you're playing this game, it is real-time. So it makes it more like a chessboard in that you have a couple different strategies. And uh, you have to um, either go on the defense and protect your planet, or you have to go on the offense. So it makes for a really interesting game, especially if you play hard. Hard is more like normal. Um, so it makes for a really fun game that it's constantly moving as you see the, I killed that but these missiles are as I come over here to intercept these missiles I have to do that unless I want to take damage. So it makes for a really fun inter interesting game that way. The other thing that's really different about this game is you can notice that I can go all the way down and all the way up. It makes for a 360 world which um, was never like that for the Star Fox so that is new and interesting to this game. 
Um, there is going to be a lot of repetition, a lot of repeated boss fights and things like that. Um, but that's to be expected. Um, the other thing I think a lot of people are excited about is, you know, how often do you get a game that's 20 years old and is re-released? I mean, you're seeing the Atari box now, but that's just going to be an emulation machine. I'm talking about, like, a real solid cartridge game coming back out. Like, that's really cool. So a lot of a lot of nostalgia there, uh, just in that for itself. So um, the ability that it's a real time strategy, you can move all the way around, some new improved levels, um, the sound, it's nothing amazing. It's definitely not a soundtrack that you would download, but you know, it's still got that nostalgic feel. And the fact that this game can support this old of a system can support this kind of graphics, you know, all things considered, is pretty darn cool. I mean, if you play this straight through, I'm not going to lie, I'm, the cons is it's going to get repetitive really quickly. Especially the boss fights, and your general mission is just to kill stuff, maybe hit a switch. Um, you know, there's not, it's not like Zelda. You're not going to find yourself in any kind of massive stimulation as far as, uh, you know, a variation between the levels. A lot of them are going to have corridors, similar enemies, and uh, similar boss fights. You might also find a little bit of lag in the boss fights, as I did. Again, the PC didn't win. That's pretty fine. Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, see how we can get competitive fighting these same enemies all the time. So we're going to be playing this on uh, 1080p resolution and uh, playing it with the SNES 9X 2010 emulator. So not too bad, all things considered, on the RetroPie. Getting, getting those 60 frames now. I think it's really on the jump scenes. Yeah, see? See how it dips like that? It doesn't dip like this on the PC. But I think once you're in the game, yeah, see? Once you're on the actual game, it jumps back up on the on the main screen. And then let's just go ahead and check within the within the fight. I'm just gonna pick Fox. Fox and Slippy. So you're back to 60 here. Uh, Cutscene, I imagine this is gonna dip again. Yep, see how you lost, I lost 10 right there. Okay, and then let's see what happens once we, on this map it's fine, and then let's intercept one of these missiles here. So 60 was on the map, and then we're actually in space on a level. I imagine it might drop a little more again. Not too bad. And what happens is on the boss fight, you're going to see it drop significantly, though. During a boss fight, when there's way more things going on, it's for sure going to um, have some issues. Somewhere between 5 and 10, maybe even 15, um, 15 frames. Whoa, I need to use my boosters! So after running 2010, I tried 2000 and I tried the regular 9X and you can see here when I went to launch, it did not boot up at all. I then tried it again. I believe next I tried the 2002. Again, 2002, it starts to boot but doesn't quite get there. So that did not work. And then finally, I used the 2005. I actually felt the 2005 looked better and operated better than the 2010, but uh, you can have your own opinion as you can see both. Wow, so on the 2005, it's actually running a lot better than the 2010. So 
So I got frame drops with 2010 here. Wow. Oh, yep. Got, we got a similar frame job. And then back on this screen, it should be fine. Yep. See if we get any frame drops here. One more. Let's make this a quick one. Are we getting frame drops? No, not yet. Got him. Nice. I have to say, it seemed like it ran way smoother there. So there you have it, Star Fox 2. You can see I was using the CRT uh, shaders on the Raspberry Pi. That was just default from this image before. You can definitely turn those off or try other shaders as well. Um, as you can see, the RetroPie could definitely handle this, no problem. There's a slight, slight frame per second loss. So if you want that perfect gameplay, you might play on the regular SNES Classic Mini or on a computer. Um, other than that, though, it's really cool. Let me know what you guys think. If you have any questions, comment below. And don't forget to give this a little thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And we'll see you on the next one.